In this video, we're going to solve this differential equation, so solution. So this is a linear differential equation with constant coefficients. So to solve it, we'll start by writing what's called the characteristic or auxiliary equation. So because we have a third derivative, we'll start by writing down m cubed plus, then we have the second derivative, so m squared, and then minus, and then whenever you have u, that's the zeroth derivative, so you could think of it as m to the zero, or just ignore it and just put the number. And this is equal to zero. Now you want to solve this equation, so typically you want to try to factor. If you can't factor it in your head, um, you want to try something else. As a last resort, which we'll attempt now, is we'll use the rational roots theorem. The rational roots theorem says that all of the possible rational roots are of the form factors of the constant term, which in this case is negative 2, it's always last over first, and then factors of the leading coefficient, which is 1. You see it's last over first, negative 2 over 1. The factors of negative 2 are plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2, and the factors of 1 are just plus or minus 1. So 1 over 1 is 1, and then um, 2 over 1 is 2. So these are the possible rational roots. Okay, These are the possible ones. So now what we do is we check. And to check, we use uh, synthetic division. It's a good idea to always start by checking 1. So let's check 1. So when you check 1, what you do is you put a 1 here like this, and you put a little box. And then now you write the coefficients down of your characteristic equation. So it's 1, 1, and then here's the, here's the tricky part, 0, negative 2. I say, where'd the 0 come from? <laughs> so there's a 0m here, right? So it's really easy to uh, forget the 0. And then you draw a line. And then you bring this one down, so 1. And then you multiply 1 times 1 is 1. Then you add 1 plus 1 is 2. Then you do 2 times 1 is 2, and then you add 0 plus 2 is 2. Then again, 2 times 1 is 2, and then you add and you get 0. Again, you bring down the 1, 1 times 1 is 1, you add 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 times 1 is 2, you add 0 plus 2 is 2, 2 times 1 is 2, you add negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So now you go with one less. This is cubed. So it'll be 1 times m squared, which is just m squared plus 2m plus 2 equals 0. And then you set that equal to 0. By the way, when we get 0 here as an answer, this means something. It means something very important. It means we're done. <laughs> and 1 is one of the solutions to our characteristic equation. I forgot to mention that. That's super important. So this is a root. Uh, or a solution to our characteristic uh, equation. Looks like it says Tom here. It's plus 0m. Let me scratch that out. Okay, so to solve this, we can use the quadratic formula, or we can complete the square. So let's go ahead and complete the square. Oh, oh, by the way, if you don't get 1 here, 0 here, say you get something else, then you just keep trying, right? You keep trying these over and over again until you get 0. That's how you know to stop, okay? So to complete the square here, we will start by maybe subtracting the 2 over. So m squared plus 2m equals negative 2. All right, and then you take this number, divide it by 2, and square it. So 2 over 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. So we add that to both sides. So we get m squared plus 2m plus 1 equals negative 1. And the left-hand side factors, it's called a perfect square trinomial. You put an m here, you put a parenthesis here, you put a 2 here. You keep the sign, always. And then you just divide this number by 2, always, no matter what. So, boom. And then here you have negative 1. So, always, okay, you always just bring down the sign and then divide by 2. To solve for m, we take the square root. Take the square root. So, we get m plus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of negative 1, which is i. So m is equal to negative 1 plus or minus i. All right, we have all of our m's. 
So now we can go ahead and write the final answer down. So recall that when you have complex conjugates like this, the answer is C1 e to the alpha x cosine beta x plus C2 e to the alpha x sine beta x. Okay, that's the case when you have complex conjugates. So this is negative 1 plus or minus 1 times i. So it's alpha plus or minus beta times i. So alpha is negative 1 and beta is actually equal to 1. So we're going to plug those in here. So let's go ahead and write the final answer down because we have to basically combine this with this answer here. Let's do this one first. Whenever it's a real number, we just know it's C1 e to the number times x. So 1 times x, so just x. Right? It's mx, so m is 1 plus C2, e to the alpha, so alpha is negative 1, cosine of beta x, which is cosine of x, and then C3, e to the negative x, sine of x. And I just realized that I made a little mistake, and it's a mistake that I make every single time. So instead of deleting this video, I'm going to show you my mistake so that you don't make it. It's not y in this problem, it's u. So it's really u equals c1 e to the t plus c2 e to the negative t cosine t. And I have made this mistake multiple times. Uh, c3 e to the negative t sine t. I've made this mistake in class. I've made this mistake in videos. But those days are gone because now it's correct. <laughs> so how did I know this? Because I've messed up before. And look, up here, it's u. Okay, it's u and t, it's t instead of x. So it's really sneaky. You know, if you're doing this for like homework or something and you type it in, you type in all the x's, you're like, oh my god, it's wrong. It's because it's t's. Super tricky. I always mess this up. So I hope this video has been helpful in some way. Good luck.